Well, here I am I'm going to paint our Walking in the Rain painting. I have an eight by 10. I have prepped the canvas by taping off the back and I have put my sawtooth hanger on the back of the canvas. In addition to that, I put a coat of gesso on it and I sanded it. And now I have also put some um, Dove Gray by Folk Art, some multi-surface paint um, as my under coat. And I did that with um, this number 16 flat brush and I did it in a cross hash motion, not trying to make it even or blended or anything like that. This is just my undercoat. In addition, I have painted the sides. So now what I'm gonna do is put another coat on my background and I am going, I want my background to be grays and whites. Um, so I have a little bit of black and some white paint on my palette. Um, I am going to mix a little bit of black, not much, in with some white and make a very, very pale gray. Real pale. I want it very light. Lots of white. A lot of paint on my brush. That's okay. Very, very light gray. Almost white. <laughs> so there's not much black in here. It is mostly white with a little bit of black. I'm making a mess. Got a lot of paint on here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same hashtag motion for my background. I'm just crisscross, crisscross. I do want some of it to be a little darker. So I'm gonna add a little black in here, up in these corners. My umbrella will be here and my lady will be in the middle. So I want the corners to be a little darker. Just a little bit. I have a little shading, not much. Dark, but a little dark. Get a little more black, a little darker gray down here at the bottom, across my bottom. Got a lot of paint on my brush. Gonna lighten it up just a touch. Get quiet when I'm doing this, but that's okay. Most of this portion of my canvas will be covered with glass for my umbrella. Okay, keep going. Get paint on my whole canvas. Everything covered.
gonna put a little bit of white paint on here because I want my center of my canvas to be a little lighter. So I'm gonna lighten it up with a little bit of white on here in the middle. This is where my lady is standing. I'm using that same dirty brush. I'm not cleaning my brush, but I want this to be lighter right in here where my lady goes. And maybe come up this way a little bit. And then my bottom is slightly darker down here. I know it looks like a mess. And now I'm going to take my mop brush and I'm going to lightly go over it and just kind of, I'm barely touching and I've got a paint bristle right here, paint brush bristle right there, get that out. And I am just going to kind of blend it and soften it so it's not so hashtaggy looking. There's another something in my canvas right here. Get that out. And I'll just blend it a little bit. I think I might need a little more paint right in here. Kind of dry a little bit. I'm not, I'm just barely touching the canvas just to kind of blend all my colors together. This look is looking down here, so I'm gonna add a little paint, try to blend it a little more right down in here. And this corner up here at the top. Put a little more paint right up in here. And blend this a little more. Oops, there's another brush hair. Get this out. There we go. Got it. And here's another one. I don't know. My brush is shedding. I might get it out. Let's see. There we go. Got it. Okay. So this is our background. And next up, we will add our tracer and another brush hair to get out. There we go. We will add our tracer and paint in our lady. So this is the background. Okay, I have my background painted with some darker grays around the edges and a little more white toward the middle. And here is my lady with the umbrella. The name of this is called Walking in the Rain. And I am going to trace this pattern onto my canvas. I have a piece of graphite paper that I'm gonna slide under my pattern here and I'm going to hold this down. Now, I don't want this graphite paper to make smudges on my canvas, so I'm going to put my finger inside the pattern area. I'm using a stylus to trace my pattern. This umbrella will be made from cut stained glass Cut and ground to shape and it's going to be blue you can use a stylus 
You can use a pencil or a pen, anything to draw your lines of your pattern onto your canvas. I've taped this down with some painter's tape to hold it in place. And then this is her arm, her dress, her dress, the bottom of her dress. And my paint, my uh, graphite paper stops right here. So I'm gonna have to stop right in that area right here and move my graphite paper. Um, her, the bottom of her dress will be covered in um, crushed glass. This will be stained glass and the bottom of her dress, this part down here will be crushed glass. Her legs will be covered in stained glass and her shoes will also be covered in stained glass. So there we go. Now we have our outline. I see I've missed a place of her arm right here. I need to draw this line right here for her arm. So there we go. This is our pattern for our painting. Our tracer is now on here. Set this to the side. Her dress is going to be red and the umbrella is going to be blue. So I am going to use cherry red as the shading for the shading of her dress. And I'm going to use Anita's true red for the body of her dress. Most of this shading will not show because it will have um, glass over the top, but just in case, I still would like to have a little bit of shading on here. I didn't have that mixed up very well. There we go. That's better. And some true red for her dress. This may take a couple of coats to get it completely covered, but, and I just have an assortment of brushes here that I'm going to use. Um, I am going to do the darker shading first. I know this part right here will be a little darker. And as you can see, this is quite transparent. So it may take a couple of coats to get this covered. Let's try this true red. It's basically the same thing. So we're just gonna get our coat on here. Follow your lines. You want to make sure you cover all of your tracer lines. You don't want them to show. So make sure that they are covered. And just get a coat on here. And then we will come back and add another coat of red. My sister is making this same pattern um, in a stained glass panel. One of the things that I like to do is take a pattern or a drawing or a picture and show how you can use it in a glass resin piece as well as a stained glass piece. So she will be making this in stained glass.
and I am making one with the painting. So we're using the same pattern. She has picked her glass and is ready to go tomorrow with cutting her glass and starting the stained glass piece. Trying to make sure I follow my tracer line, but at the same time I cover my tracer line There we go. First coat of red is on here. And then we will add another coat. We'll do this part of her dress. Make sure I follow line of the umbrella. Right there. The glass that I'm using for the umbrella is kind of semi-transparent, so you can see through it in some places. So I have to decide if I'm going to paint the umbrella and then put the glass over the top, or if I'm just going to let the glass do the job and you'll be able to see the gray through the glass. I haven't decided that yet. So here's her sleeve and her elbow. And there she is, her dress is all painted. So I'm gonna clean this brush out. And I'm gonna get a clean brush because sometimes red wants to act weird. Doesn't wanna clean up real good. Okay, so I'm gonna use a different brush and I'm gonna do her legs. I am gonna paint her legs, even though they will have a little piece of stained glass over the top. If the stained glass doesn't completely cover, I wanna make sure that I have um, a little paint under there. Doesn't take much paint, just a drop of paint. Whoops, way too much. Way too much paint. Get another brush different brush, smaller brush. So I have a small brush here and I have, I'm using um, Folk Art Camel, which is probably a little dark, but it's what I had. I can come back and lighten it up if I need to. So this is just to block in her legs and then they will have glass over the top. we go. That is done. Cover my edges. Make sure I've got everything, all my lines covered, and a good coat. Okay. Her shoes are going to be black. So I'm going to use this same brush with a little bit of licorice by Folk Art, just the black paint. And I just need just a dab of black paint to do her shoes. And her shoes are just little ovals, like so. Can you see this? Make sure you can see. So this is her shoes. And do the other shoe. There we go. That's her shoes. So there we go. Let's see if I can go ahead and add a second coat of red 
see if it's dry enough that I can add a second coat of red on here. Go ahead and let that dry before I decide about my umbrella. Can get this second coat on here. I am going to come back and add a little shading to show like the bend of her arm and her waistline. Get that a little bit shaded in. But I need to get this red on here because it may take two or three coats so that it's covered. Even though it will have glass over the top, I still want to have a good, pretty undercoat for the dress. Oops, it's lifting a little bit right there. Paint is lifting up. bit more and this step will be completed I have to let it dry I want to make sure my red is dry before I put um, anything on here for the umbrella because I don't want if I mix, touch them together, I don't want to make purple. So my umbrella is blue. Should I decide to do an undercoating of paint for my umbrella? I don't want it to mix. There we go. Okay, this has to dry. And then I will come back and add the shading for her arm and her waist and the stripes in her dress. So there we go. See you in a few. Okay, let's add a little shading to our red dress. So I'm going to put a little bit of dark shading up here around her waist and maybe a little bit down here. And then I'm going to put some shading right here to show her arm, to show where her arm goes right here and her dress. And then maybe a little bit around her arm. And then I want to accentuate my lines which make her dress. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. You guys need to know I am not a painter. This really doesn't look darker to me. It looks almost the same color. So I am going to get a teensy touch of black on my plate. And I mean teensy. And I'm going to take a little bit of this black and add it in here to create a little bit of darkness. Get a little more red over here. Ooh, this is really getting dark. I'm not good at this mixing business. I think that might work right there. A little darker, a little deeper. Okay. And I'm going to put a little bit right here on the outside, not much, and a little bit along her dress line right here, under the umbrella, around the side of the umbrella right here, and her arm. Just a little bit right in there. 
Then I'm going to take it and I'm going to do a little bit along the top of her waist. And now my line of her dress comes down like this. So we want to have a little bit of shading down through here to create the fold of her dress. Just a little bit more on here, maybe a little bit of red in with it. And let's create this fold of her dress right along here. There we go. Like that. A little bit more. We're going to do this fold on this side. This one comes up and comes in. So we're going to kind of come right here, come down, and create our fold of our dress. Like that. And then let's put, let's make it a little darker. Remember this is gonna have glass over the top of it, so you may not even see this, but I just think if you can see it, let's do it. And let's get this dress up in here done around the umbrella. Be kind of a shadow line right there. And down here at the base of her elbow will be kind of shadowy. And the top of her waistline, right in here. Create the shadow at the top of her dress. Okay, now we're gonna take the same dirty brush and we're gonna get a little bit of red. We're gonna go over one more coat of red on her dress. This is just the true red, Anita's true red. So this is my third coat of red on her dress. I'm going right over where I created those shadow lines, which will kind of push them back a little bit and make them more shaded. I'll still have the lines without it being stark. <clears throat> Follow my line here, my tracer line, right along the bottom of her dress. Right here. Oops. I want it crisp. Right here. There we go. And we will do the middle of her dress in this red. everything filled in so it's a bright true red color and then we will put red glass over the top I think I need a little bit of this shading right in here Maybe a little darker, right in there, there we go. And now I'll put some red over the top to kind of blend it in. There we go. What you think? Hope you like it. We're getting there.
Okay, now I am going to create the lines of my umbrella because even when I put the glass over the top of the umbrella, it's going to have, um, the lines will show. So I'm gonna get a small brush. Sorry, I'm over here at the brushes. Looking for a small liner brush. This one right here. A little detail brush. I'm gonna get some water on it. And I'm gonna put it in my black paint and make it as inky as I can. Roll it around in here. Got a little too much water on my brush. It's all up on the barrel of the brush. A little more water. Get it to a nice point. And now I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna draw in these lines right here. Remember this is gonna have glass over it. And so these lines will show between the pieces of stained glass. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be perfectly straight. but I do want to keep create that detail. So I got a little more water on my brush. Here's this one. Here's this one. These are a little fatter, but the glass will come up on each side of it and create these ribs of the umbrella. Now, if I decide that I'm going to paint my umbrella blue, these lines will still show. Okay, let's do this one. All the way out to the edge. Get a little darker right in here. And this one. Sorry, I gotta be quiet while I'm doing this. Not talking. And one more. Okay. Now, there is a, the little top part of the umbrella is right here. And that is actually gonna be done in glass but it will go right there. But it will actually sit on top of the other stained glass and it'll be a tiny, oops, it'll be a tiny piece of um, stained glass. Okay, well, there we go. So now we have the shading on her dress, which I still think needs a little bit of something up here at the top. It doesn't quite look right to me. Needs a little more shading right in here there we go get it a little bit darker right here a little more shading around her waist right there there we go okay so there she goes we'll let this dry and then make a decision about our umbrella and we'll go from there Okay, 
we are now at the studio and if you'll recall we painted the background of our 8x10 canvas and we painted our dress on our um, lady we painted her legs and her feet and I put some black lines on the umbrella this morning I cut the glass for her legs and her feet her shoes and I also have cut the glass for her umbrella and I am going to glue this umbrella down and I'm going to glue her legs and her shoes down so that they don't move when I put the resin on so that is our next step is to glue these pieces down. I'm using Aileen's clear tacky glue. I just need a dot on here. I don't need much so that I can glue this down and it will stay put. Just putting a dot of glue on here. Whoops, that's a lot. Let's wipe some of this off because that's way too much. So I'm gonna wipe some of this off with a Lysol wipe. So it was way too much glue. Put this right here. So now we have our legs glued down. We're gonna glue down our shoes. So I'm just gonna put a dot of glue here. Just a touch. And a dot of glue here for her shoes. So there's that. And now we're going to glue her umbrella down. Glue the umbrella down. This glass goes right up to the edge of my canvas, which is okay. So we're going to put this here. And go all the way around with our glue. I just want enough to hold it in place while I do the resin. This um umbrella glass parts uh, what I did was I cut out the pattern just cut out the shape of the umbrella with a pair of scissors and then I um, glued those pattern parts down to my glass cut the glass out and then I ground the edges and I ground it to fit. Make sure I didn't have anything hanging over the edge and that my pieces were gonna fit together and maintain the shape of my umbrella. Well. Get all this on here so it can dry while I put the glass on her dress. It won't be completely dry, but it will be dry enough that I can put the resin on. Okay, our big piece and this piece. There we go. All glued down and ready for resin. Okay, I moved the leg, bumped it, so I make sure I get it in the right spot. Get that fixed. Okay, I am going to put um, red. This is one eight inch shower door that I painted with Tinted 
which is a uh, spray paint for glass. It's translucent, and the color was strawberry. So I'm gonna just take some of this glass and I'm gonna put it down here on her dress. Just kind of pile it up a little bit and shape it on here. So this will be her dress. Let's see, we got us a little point right there for the corner of her dress. I don't want it too thick, but I do want it to be more than one layer. So I'm just gonna put some on here and spread it around and cover my dress. Y'all hear that bell ringing? That's my dog. And she's wanting to go outside, so she's gonna have to wait till I'm through videotaping. I should have known. Every time I start videotaping, she rings the bell. So, get my glass on here. And then we can put the resin on. Thank you. My sister's here with me. She says she'll take Molly out because she'll just keep ringing the bell until she goes out. So if you hear the doorbell ring, you'll know she's going out. And in our videos when I was painting, you can hear her ringing the bell in those videos too. I think she has a sixth sense and knows when I'm doing a videotape. Getting quiet, looking at what I'm doing. Sorry, not talking much. and run along the side right here. Now, remember I put some shading on her dress. You can't see that shading through this glass, so it's not necessary to do. You can just paint it red, and you really you can't see the shading through the glass, but I did it just in case you could, it would be done. Okay, here we go. Her dress is done. There we go. Okay, so her dress is done. I think that looks good. Oops, I need a little piece right here small piece right here in this corner down here there we go put these up here on top okay all right so there's her dress completed and ready for resin one of the things I always do is make sure I don't have any pieces sticking straight up they won't cut anybody but you don't want it to be real pokey either. So I always try to make sure I don't have any pieces sticking up. All right, then I have this glass. This is base filler that comes from Michaels. It's small. So it's little small pieces of glass and we'll put it down here at the bottom of the canvas, light water. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit down here. Not much, just a little bit. And I want all little small pieces down here. I don't want anything big. Just a few little sprinkles down here. This is reflective glass. So one side has a mirror. 
a mirror kind of look to it, which I think will add to the water look. So get this on here. Not much, just a little bit down here by her feet, around her feet. Just a little sprinkling. See if I can find a couple of really small pieces to put down here. There's one, here's another one, and here's one. So now she's got like water under her feet. She's walking through the water. And I think that's good. Nothing, try to keep it organic, not real fixed. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I am going to use this. This is vase filler also, and I'm gonna use this as my raindrops but I am gonna put those raindrops on, on top of the resin. So my next thing is to put this up on risers. So I'm gonna set this up on risers so that when I put my resin on here, it will, if it runs over the edge, it won't stick to my table. So there's that, sitting up on risers. And now I can mix my resin. Okay, so I am using Art Resin. It's a two-part epoxy resin. It's in a two-ounce packet. And one side has resin and one side has hardener. I'm gonna take this clip off the middle and I'm gonna knead it together for three minutes. So I'm just gonna take this and push it back and forth. If you were doing this where it was not in this packet, you would pour equal parts, I'm using two ounces, so you would put one ounce of resin in a cup, and then in a separate cup, you would put one ounce of hardener, then you would put one cup into the other. Doesn't matter if you put the resin into the hardener or the hardener into the resin, that doesn't matter. And then you would stir with a stir stick. You can use a popsicle stick or you can use a resin popsicle stick and you would stir in your cup for three minutes. You wanna stir with purpose, but you don't wanna beat eggs because if you whip it, it's going to incorporate a lot of air into your resin and you don't wanna do that. But you also want, don't wanna to stir too slow because it won't mix very well if you stir really slow. You can see how it's turning cloudy. Once it is completely incorporated into each other and completely mixed, it will be clear. So I'm gonna do this. I have a clock here, so I'm timing myself. Make sure I have my three minutes. I hope you guys have enjoyed this piece. Um, Sharon is cutting it out as a stained glass pattern. So she's making it as a stained glass panel. And she has a blue dress made from Baroque glass and her umbrella is yellow. And her background is raindrop glass. So it looks like raindrops in her glass. It's gonna be really cool. So keep going. Make sure I get it mixed really good. You don't wanna be shy on your mixing. If you don't mix for three minutes, it will not be mixed thoroughly. You can mix longer than three minutes, but, um, and sometimes I do have to mix for a few more seconds beyond that. Once you have it mixed, you have 45 minutes of working time to use it. And I use art resin because it's made for art. It's made to go over art and it stays clear longer than other resins, like casting resins will turn yellow. This one would probably turn yellow over time, but um, as long as you take care of it and don't have it in direct sunlight or in darkness, it will not turn yellow. 
and it also has low odor, so you don't have, a, have to wear a respirator when you're making this or using art resin. It's also food safe, so you can put it like on cheese boards and things like that. Tables, it is food safe. Almost done. See how it's gotten clear? There are some bubbles in there, but that's okay. They're not little tiny micro bubbles. If you had micro bubbles in there, that would be hard to get out with a torch. Keep it going. There we go. That's my three minutes. So I have mixed for three minutes. Now I'm going to take a pair of scissors. Let me put my gloves on before I do that. Uh, always wear gloves when you're working with resin. Now I was um, mixing my, oops, my glove just tore up. Let me get another glove. Hold tight. You always want to wear gloves. You don't want to get it on your hands, if at all possible. I also wear an apron so I don't get it on my clothes. All right, so now I have my gloves on. And obviously I have two sizes of gloves, and that's okay. All right, I'm gonna cut the corner of this off. And because I drizzled this, I'm going to pour it into a cup um, to <coughs> drizzle it out of the cup. You could do it straight out of this packet, but I feel like I do better if I do it out of a cup, so I am squeezing it into a cup. I don't know if this is on the camera or not, but if it's off camera, I'm just taking this packet and putting it in a cup. Make sure you get it all out. It's not the, it can be a little bit pricey. So make sure you use it all and make sure you get it all out of here. You don't want any thing left in your little bag. Okay, there we go, that's done. Okay, so now I have my resin in my cup and as you can see, there are a few bubbles in there. So I am gonna take it and I'm gonna stir it around just a second, make sure I got everything good. These bubbles really won't be a big deal. All right, so now I'm gonna drizzle it on here. You always wanna cover your glass first. It will seep like on her dress, it's gonna seep down through her dress and it will run out the edges of her dress and when it run, wherever it runs out the edges of her dress, you can use that to cover the rest of your canvas. You wanna do this in a methodical manner because you wanna make sure you cover all of your glass. If you have glass that is not covered and does not have resin on it, it will fall off. When the resin is dry, it will fall off and you don't want that to happen. So make sure that you, I start on one side and go to the other, just to make sure I've got everything covered and I can see where I've been. You wanna put enough on here for it to seep down in between here, but not so much that it runs out all over the place and you have too much of it. I usually do this where I don't cover the edges of my canvas, this has a something on it right here, string. Um, but on this one, because my glass, my umbrella is so close to the edge, 
I know it's going to go over the edge of my canvas, and so I am going to do the edges of my canvas. But I want to try to avoid drips on the edge of my canvas, if at all possible. So I want the edges covered, but not, I don't want it to look like paint drips. Okay, her dress is covered. And we're gonna do this glass down here at the very bottom. I'm just gonna put a thin layer on here because once again, I don't want it to go over the edge of my canvas. Do her legs and her feet. Now, if you were doing this and you didn't have a grinder, you could certainly use broken glass or chip glass for the umbrella. You could use the same thing for her feet and her legs. I just wanted the umbrella to be smooth. I didn't want it to be like her dress and have a whole lot of texture. That was me. But you do you and use what you have. So I'm going to do along these seam lines so I can make sure it gets down in the seams of the umbrella, down in between here. That is going to help hold it in place. As most of you know, I am a started out as a stained glass artist. I had a lot of scrap glass. So that's how I got into the resin, using glass and resin together. So I have grinders and things like that that you may not have, and that's okay. You don't have to have all that to be able to do a piece like this. All right, get it around the edges. of my glass. Make sure the edges are covered. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this silicone spreader and I am going to pull this resin across my umbrella glass. Make sure it is covered. That it is completely covered. and try to get right up to the edge without going over the edge is the goal, which is probably not gonna happen, but it'll be all right. If it goes over the edge, we're just gonna do the edges of our canvas with resin. Okay, so our glass is covered. Now we're gonna take where it ran out from around the glass, like around this umbrella, and we're going to pull it out to the edge of the canvas. You want to pull it to the edge of the canvas, but not pull it over the edge of the canvas. Some people like their edges done. I'm just one who doesn't do them. But everybody does their own thing. So I'm going to pull it away from my umbrella and pull it out to the edge. Pull it away from the dress and pull it out to the edge. Remember, you have 45 minutes of working time, which is more than enough time to do this piece. Get some of this down here and pull it out to the edge. Get it as smooth as you can get it. without pulling it over the edge and without any skips in your resin. Okay. 
Okay, keep going. Okay. All right, it's all spread. And so far, it has not run over the edge. Doesn't mean it's not going to, but right now it hasn't run over the edge. I've gotten it up to the edge of my canvas. I've got my corners covered good. All right, so now I'm gonna put my raindrops on here. I'm gonna put a little resin over my raindrops. I'm cleaning my tools with a Lysol wipe. Okay, I'm just gonna get a little bit of this base filler glass, and I'm just gonna kind of sprinkle it on here like raindrops. If it gets on her dress, it's okay. And you can move these around with a your popsicle stick or a skewer or your spreader or whatever. You can kind of move them around if you want to. Um, if they feel clumped together or something like that. Make sure I have some down here where I put this blue glass for my water. Make sure I get some down here in this. I don't want any hanging over the edge of my canvas, so I want to make sure that there are none right at the edge sticking over the edge of my canvas. Now I'm going to take just a little bit of resin and go over them. They are stuck down in the resin, but they will look more incorporated into the piece if you just put just a little bit of resin over the top of them. One of the things you can do is just move them around and the roll them around in the resin and it will cover them. But I need a little more resin over here, so I'm just gonna cover them a little bit. that's gonna get it make sure I don't have any skippies anywhere everything is covered and I used about an ounce and a half of this resin so I have a little bit of resin left over I do have a project over here on the side that I can use it on so it won't go to waste. All right, now I'm gonna take a skewer and make sure I don't have any debris in my, on my canvas. Make sure there are no dog hairs, pet hair, dust, anything like that. Notice how there's no droplets here, so I'm gonna move some of these down a little bit, get these spread out a little bit. And kind of even them up some. The name of this piece is Walking in the Rain, and it was a free stained glass pattern that I just took the pattern and I adapted it to make it a resin piece. Um, I had to change the size and reshape a few things and some stuff like that to make it a resin piece and it looks like this piece of my umbrella has moved a little bit or a piece of my umbrella has moved a little bit but I think we're okay move 
move some of this down. Just get it like you want it. Okay. Now I'm going to put a couple of pieces right here, a couple of pieces up here, just where it looks like it needs a few drops. And I think that's good. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to torch it. I'm using a creme brulee torch and you want the heat to pop the bubbles. You don't want to touch the flame to your canvas because it will burn your resin and then your resin will turn yellow and you'll have to repair it. So you want to make sure you keep your flame away from your canvas and you want to keep it moving at all times. You don't want to concentrate in one spot. So I'm just going to pop the bubbles on my resin. You can actually see them pop. I don't know if you can see them pop on the video, but if you were doing this, you can see the resin bubbles popping. And there you go. That is our walking in the rain piece. All complete. Need to let it sit for 24 hours to dry. I will cover it with a plastic bin so that um, I don't get any debris, any dust from the air conditioning or anything like that in it. And um, I will watch it for bubbles. I may torch it again in a few minutes just to make sure I don't have any bubbles anywhere. And I'll also check my sides to make sure I don't have anything running over on the edges. So that is our resin piece. I hope you have enjoyed this. I will show you the dried and finished product. So stay tuned.